All right. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Let's get rolling here. So uh, I want to just read this uh, very quickly. So for those of you who don't know Mike, but uh, Mike is a, not only a dear friend to the brokerage of Everest, but also just has an incredible story in relationship to everything that he's been doing, has done, how he started his career, what he's done in the past, and uh, just a little bit of his journey over the last uh, couple of months has been inspiring. I think many of you have seen that, uh, watched that as he's had some health issues and uh, persevering through those. And uh, I just thought it would be such a cool idea to have this guy uh, and have Mike speak with us and just share his journey and uh, excited to hear about that. But let me just read this little bio that we have. It's very short, but let me give it to you. Mike Hancock grew up in Riverton, Utah, where his family opened an Arby's franchise. Growing up in, in, in a family that runs a restaurant business instilled in him the importance of the value of the guest experience and delivering the high level of service the customer deserves. He eventually graduated with a business degree from the University of Utah. Good job, the right school, there you go and took over the family business. Unless you're in California, then it's UCLA, by the way. He, has, he was elected as an officer in Salt Lake City, uh, Arby's designated market area, and has spent over a decade learning growing skills in finance, accounting, customer relations, and experience marketing, and the training and development of others. In June of 2016, Mike began his real estate career. So he's only been a realtor for a short period of time. With the goal of building an investment portfolio and soon fell in love with helping others meet their personal real estate goals. He's now an associate broker, with a master certified negotiation expert designation. And then he quote, he's quoted as, I've been with the Everest Devers from day one and I will never leave, said Mike. I'm 100% loyal to this organization, its structure, its atmosphere, and the culture it provides. I'm super excited to be coached by the Everest sales system, which he recently, just a few weeks ago, signed up for the Everest sales system, which we're so excited to have him be a part of. And then Mike recently started his team and is excited to bring others along to the journey of his success. So far this year, he's closed over 20 transactions with a goal of over 30, which he is on track to hit in spite of some major hurdles. On Father's Day, Mike was hospitalized with a serious illness that landed him in the ICU. During my sickness, I closed two deals while in the hospital, one of them which I saved while I was in ICU, and I had three more closings while I was recovering at home. Mike said, I fully believe that the things I've learned at Everest about mindset have saved my life. And as I face this illness, at a minimum, it has put me in the mindset to learn and to grow from the experience. Mike lives in Harriman today with his, in Utah, uh, Harriman, Utah, with his wife, Courtney, and children, uh, Chloe, Alexander, Lizzie, Emily. For hobbies, Mike keeps honeybees. I did not know that and enjoys paintball, fishing, and bird hunting. All right, Mr. Mike. Let's sure, uh, how pull are you? you up here. How are you? Great. How are you? Hey, I'm great. So excited to have you with us. So thank you for being with us today. I appreciate you uh, having me. I'm excited. Yeah. 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 Well, it's great. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed our time that we've got to spend together. I know that you and I have spent some some one-on-one -on -one time together. And uh, as we were going through that, I have to tell you, I was just so inspired. So just, you have such a great story. And uh I have to tell you, I didn't realize you had all of this uh, experience in regards, of course, to helping others, building uh, franchises and building uh, organizations. And uh, that's evident as to how quickly that you got up and, and rolling. And now you're in the team creation process and, and it's exciting to see what happens. So tell us just a little bit about you and then we'll get into a little bit of the history of, of what happened. But Tell us just a little bit more about you. Like, uh, talk to us about the last four years and your journey to real estate. And then uh, we'll get into some of the things that you've been dealing with most recently on Father's Day, of course, with the illness and the things that you worked with, had to work through and are continuing to work through. But uh, tell us about the last four years. Who, who is Mike Hancock? Yeah, so, um, man, that's a, that's a big question. Um, you know, kind of what led me to this point, uh, I mentioned uh, being involved with uh, my family business and restaurants. Uh, I took that over and we, we built from one restaurant to three and uh, kind of got to a point where originally I was getting into real estate thinking that that might help me build additional restaurants, uh, being able to find the real estate and build those restaurants. And uh, once I got in, I, I kind of, uh, learned a few other things that kind of put a ceiling on my ability to progress and uh, really it came down to um, that I, I wasn't probably going to be able to go too much further in restaurants, uh, you know, without a parent passing away and that's not a great promotion strategy for any of us, right? <laughs> no, it's not. So I, uh, I started looking uh, a little bit uh, 
Uh, and I guess it just, it was very fortuitous because uh, go, reaching a ceiling in, in one area of life and then at the same time, uh, initially uh, part of that solution was coming into real estate and, and not having a ceiling. And uh, that became very appealing very quick. And uh, I just love, uh, I just love people. I love interfacing with people. I like helping people accomplish their goals. And that became very exciting and very rewarding very quickly. And uh, just, uh, I just decided this is the path. This is the path forward. There's no ceiling and the only limits are the ones I set on myself, so. Yeah. So what advice would you give? You know, you've been, you've been doing the business for, for four years. Of course, you started your career with the brokerage on the Everest side. You're now currently being coached by, by the Everest sales system. You've been in some other coaching programs. Uh, just talk, talk about your journey just a little bit over the last four years. Like, how have you gotten it to where, you know, as I even read that, you know, here you are in the hospital, saving deals, putting deals together. Uh, you know, what has got it to where you, you've got the business that you have? What is it that you've done? What advice would you give to another agent who is just starting out, especially as they're getting their career, or maybe they're just in a slump or, you know, more importantly, maybe they're agents who are doing really well right now and they want to do even better. What, what would you tell them? I, I think the biggest thing that I've, I've learned and, and one of my most firm beliefs, uh, and this probably stems from my restaurant background a little bit, is that uh, the experience that you provide to other people is, is absolutely crucial. And I think a big part of that is just being focused on their needs and not worrying about the money. You're not worrying about what you're going to get out of the relationship. Uh, whether that's a transaction, uh, wh whether that's a payday, but if you're just truly and legitimately focused on the other person's needs, um, the one, the money will show up for you, uh, but two, um, that's where I believe true loyalty is created, and um, and that was you know reinstilled by some of the things that you know came as a result of, of some of the sickness or those, those beliefs were reinstilled in me um, as some of the fallout from the sickness I went through, so. Absolutely, no, that totally makes sense. So uh, let's, let's, let's talk about just what it went on. So here you are on Father's Day uh, of this year, which I guess One. that's June 21st, if I recall, some, or something around the 20th. Right. Uh, and, and, that third Sunday in, in, that third Sunday in, in June. So tell us what happened. So actually, I got sick the Sunday before. I'm I'm kind of stubborn, um, you know. I'm, I I don't like doctors, so I I like to avoid them. Uh, so I I got sick. I crashed. I actually, uh, you know, obviously I thought I had COVID because uh, I'm in bed with the chills and I'm tired and I I, I don't have any energy. And uh, I got tested for that on like Tuesday, and it came back negative on Thursday. And then I think must not have been making sense talking to my wife because she she, def, she made a definitive answer that I was going to the hospital, and uh, very quickly after getting uh, getting there, they they kicked her out and stole me from her, and uh, and things progressed from there. So, okay, and then from from that standpoint, she got to the hospital, and then what what did they what did, what was discovered? So they uh, you know, after uh, you know pulling blood and uh, all kinds of things, they initially kind of thought that there's something you know, going on with my uh, gallbladder or they said liver area gallbladder and they were emphasizing, you don't need your gallbladder. So that's cool if we need to take that out. And I was like, okay, cool. They started uh, doing an ultrasound and uh, they came back and they said, hey, there's something really big on your liver. We don't know what that is. We've got to figure that out. And that's a really long, it was about 30 hours between being told that and finding out what it was. I, I, I went in an MRI too, which is a crazy experience if you've never had that joy in life. Uh, and then um, I ended up, I had an 11 inch abscess on my liver, just kind of out of the blue. And that's, I, I got to spend eight days in the hospital resolving that. And uh, about five weeks after uh, to kind of really get my energy back to where I could start working again. So so talk about those days for a minute. I mean, you and I discussed them just for a moment. I mean, I mean, obviously you hear about those types of things. You're waiting 30 different hours for or 30 hours for, you know, results. You're waiting 30 hours with, you know, a lot of unknown. Uh, you get an answer as to like, well, wait, what is this, you know, on, on my liver? Uh, you know, I have to believe that at that moment you certainly were going, and I think there's many of us, I mean, I've, I've been there, done that. And I'm, very interested, Mike, is to, you know, you have, you have obviously a, a young family, 
no, no question. I mean, I'm looking here, you got a seven month old, a six year old, a nine year old, 11 year old, you've got a young family. So you hear about this, this liver thing, what's going on through, through your mind and, and how do you, how do you get your mind back? And what I was also so touched by it and was what you did at the tail end or while I think you were still in the hospital, you put out a post of gratitude, which I thought was so inspiring and, uh, and touching. So what was going on for you during those time, that time frame mentally? And how did you get back mentally? Well, so I, I guess, you know, you hear something's big on your liver and you got to figure that out. Obviously, our, our minds go to, you know, cancer and, and things like sure. that. And, uh, and that was that was a little stressful, obviously. Uh, you know, I, I think mindset wise, I, I, I almost want to go back in time a few months. Uh, you, you interviewed John Aubrey on here uh, a couple months ago. And that interview was very touching to me because he, he talked about his mindset sh uh, switch from you know, God gave me this and he did this to me and he made that switch mentally to this challenge was specifically picked out for me, for me to have a benefit in my life. And once he made that, uh, everything he wanted in his life came into his life. He got married, he had a great relationship, uh, you know, and, and I have thought a lot about that interview. And up until this uh, challenge, it was very easy for me in, in challenges to go to a mind space of why is this happening to me and, uh, and to live in that space of why me. And this being uh, you know, the hardest thing I've gone through in my life, it was the first time I was able to kind of go through a challenge really and just, okay, this is what's in my life. This is what I'm dealing with. And um, and it was never a why me. It was like, this is the challenge. This is, there's something I'm supposed to get out of this. And so I was able to kind of go through this and just really see just many, many, many blessings and, and good things in my life. And I felt, uh, I felt just very, I, I felt like it, I would have been ungrateful to not express some of those gratitudes out into the world uh, as I, as I kind of came through this. I love that, Mike. Well, you know, I wrote down this, I wrote down a statement, right? You've heard me say it before, but, and to that point of, of what uh, John Aubrey had also said about, right, that it was not a punishment in so many words, it was a real gift and how he chooses to use that gift of cerebral palsy to his advantage uh, is entirely up to him. And I wrote this down and I'm, I'm certain because I write it down often because it's often a reminder and that is that life is happening for me, not to me. And then you said something very profound. I hope everyone heard this. In so many words, you, you basically said, and I wrote it down, what am I supposed to learn from all of this? And I think that as we go through these many difficult moments of our lives, and look, we're all going to have them. We're going to have, we're going to have our struggles in regards to economics at some point in our life. We're going to have struggle in regards to any parts of the relationships that are most important to us in our lives. And we, of course, are going to have you know complications and challenges when it comes to our health. And I think so often that we forget how important it is to recognize that many of the things that are happening, although we may not be able to see it, it's a far better story to tell ourselves that, you know, we're not here to be punished. No one's trying to do something to us. We're not, you know, someone doesn't have it out for us. The, you know, God doesn't have it out for us. People don't have it out for us. And that life really is happening for us. And so what is there to learn from all of this? And, and so here's, that's, that's the question I want to ask you now is that you knew there's so, so what have you learned? What have you learned from since, you know, basically Father's Day on? What so, would you say, uh, man, this is my major takeaway? Yeah, and I, I wrote down a handful of things here because- Please, uh, I'd love to hear, we want to hear them. When, when you're in the hospital for eight days and you think about what am I learning? Uh, well, there's a lot. <laughs> and that's why I kind of got <laughs> I, to the place of yes, gratitude. Um, the, the first, I, I thought a lot about, uh, you know, one of my very first morning ascents, you talked about three pillars, like a stool with, th uh, a stool with three legs, having health relationships and economy being those three, uh, those three legs. And you pointed out that if, if you didn't have one of those three legs in place, the other two fall apart. And I, I learned that uh, very, very quickly. If, if you don't have your health, which I, I had taken away from me, just, just like that is how it disappeared. Saturday, I was up doing stuff. I was I was having a great day. Sunday morning, I was in bed and couldn't do a thing. Um, and I lost the health and my relationships and economy disappeared. I, I had a 
I told you this, it was, it was pretty touching. I had a, my six year old daughter came up to me and she's like, daddy, I want you to play with me. And I just had no energy to be able to play with her. And then she hit me with a double whammy saying, you never play with me because you're always at work. Mm. And so I kind of came out one, the importance of equally focusing and having a balance on those three areas of your life. Uh, because not only did having my health um, rob me of my relationships and my economy, but uh, focusing too much on on work was robbing my relationship with my daughter and, yeah. and my other kids, I'm sure. So uh, one of that. my big takeaways was just, we've got to have a balance. And, and if we don't have a balance between those three areas, um, all the areas will suffer and collapse altogether if we don't, if we, if we ignore those long enough. I love so that. that. Was one big that fantastic. Away. Wait, I hope everyone's hearing that. That is those three pillars, right? The, the economics, the relationships and uh, the health. And you look at those relationships that the, I always talk about these five, Mike, just as a reminder to everybody, but the relationship with yourself, your relationship with God, your relationship with your intimate partner, your relationship with your children. And then I always say the fifth is everybody else, whether that be close friends, associates at work, clients, people, or the person at the checkout line, the way in which you relate to humanity overall. And I hope that when, you, when we talk about the finances, if you're taking notes, guys, just remember, it's not just the cash flow, it's the assets. And we want to make sure we create cash flow. Cash flow helps us to build or to buy assets. And assets then eventually, hopefully, the end result is that those assets are producing cash flow. And then, of course, the obvious, which is the health and the vitality of our lives. So, man, those those three pillars, and we're going to be tried in every single one of them. And sometimes we think we're going to escape with not getting a, a trial uh, and the errors of our ways in those areas, but it's just the nature of the beast. And And I have to tell you, that's why I believe life is happening for us, and there's just no reason that it shouldn't be that way. So that's great. Mike, continue. What else did you learn? Um again, I, it reinforced the need, the needs that you take care of other people before you. Uh, George, mm -hmm. so I work a lot with buyers and as part of that relationship, I, I a lot of times am meeting people that, you know, they've known me for 30 seconds before we start working together. And, and I'm not really big personally on the buyer broker agreement because I just, I tell them that, listen, we've known each other for a minute and it's weird to say, let's enter into a legal agreement. And I say, I want the opportunity to earn your business and us signing that document will be the natural result of me doing my job. And so uh, that being said, I, I have five, I had five buyers I was working with before I got sick and I, I didn't have a buyer broker on any of them. And one of the things that stood out to me coming out of it is I, well, so one, I had one of my buyers stalk me, found where I lived and they brought my family dinner while I was in the hospital. And that just blew me away. It completely blew me away. It was, it was definitely not expected. And, um, you know, I asked them about that and they, they just said, Mike, you've put our needs above anything else. And we wanted to, we wanted to do something to help you. And That's awesome. it, was, it was amazing. And, and obviously just making sure, just cause people will get all screwy with this, but when you're talking, obviously you're having the buyer broker contract signed prior to the contract being signed, Hundred percent. but you're, you're talking about the fact of that relationship doesn't become contractual with a notepad or a piece of paper, I should say, but you're creating that relationship by the depth of the connection and the depth of care concern and for their well-being, and that it becomes a natural product that that's just an easy process. And I, and I think that that loyalty created through addressing their needs and being focused on them. I think that's more powerful in a legal contract. I mean, that's what that's I, what loyalty. I have found off, and Mike, what I found oftentimes in those scenarios is that it becomes a deeper relationship and it makes you have to even become a better agent because if the document's not signed and although people may be shuddering to the idea of the document not being signed is that people are being led by you versus forced to work with you versus they choose to work with you. And there's a different energy that comes from that. So what's interesting is I speak very seldom about this but I was very similar as I worked with buyers. And I, I look back at my career now of over 26 years and how seldom ever, ever that I can remember, in so many words, getting, quote, screwed over because I did all this work for an individual and then they decided to go a different direction. 
it, it's, it, it's really interesting to me how important it is to give the service and render the care and the concern and putting the priority of the client ahead of everything else as you work through that, that it becomes just, I love what you said, a natural, you know, natural event to the process because of what you've done. I love that. That's great. Great. What, well said, by the way. Yeah, and so kind of in that vein, I, I, have, I have the five buyers I was working with. I didn't have a buyer broker and I disappeared on them for six weeks. And in my mind, I thought they have a hundred percent. I don't blame them at all if they've all moved on because they're, they're invested in, in getting into their home. And, and I did communicate that with them where I was at. And, and I even communicated with them that I had, I had so many people from the brokerage. I had April Oaks, I had Brandon Plant, uh, you know, Jason Carlson, Mike, I just had all these great relationships that I've got reach out and say, Mike, if you need anything, if you need me to help any of your clients, I'm there for you. And I, and I offer that to the buyers. I'm like, Hey, I have other people that can help you. So you're not waiting on me. And all five of them said, no, Mike, you get better. We'll be here when you're ready to go. Awesome. And, and that, that blew me away. That just well, that's a testament away. again to those relationships, right? Definitely. And so that was one of my big takeaways. If we focus on them, loyalty is truly created. And, and, and that's where those long-term relationships, I, I believe, come from. And, and that's, that's hopefully going to become a long-term good benefit for, for life and me. I love it. I love it. What else have you learned? What else would you say you've learned through a near-death experience and being in ICU and, you know, a young family and looking at your future? And in fact, let me ask it a different way. What have, what have you declared to yourself that are now almost what I would consider non-negotiables? And, if you, and, if, and I, having had a handful of near-death experiences myself, unfortunately, uh, it makes you take a step back and recognize you, as you know, what you already have expressed the importance of certain things. So for you, what are the declarations? What are the, some of the non-negotiables for you today that are now that you've been on the, the verge or the edge of death, what would you say is different for you and what would you declare as a non-negotiable? Um, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's great because Coming out of this, I, I, you gave us the opportunity with Everest Cell System to meet with Dave Austin. I had the opportunity to do my game ready with him, and we, uh, we crafted kind of my three main intentions, which very much came out of this and came out of the three pillars. And so one of those non-negotiables is I'm going to make decisions from a place of health because I've got to protect that pillar because if it goes away, you don't have your health, you literally don't have anything. Um, my other one was to live a life in the mindset of abundance. Um, you know, I just, I don't want the lack of money to be a reason that me or my family or my children miss up and miss on an opportunity. Uh, we, we have an abundance, life is happening for us. And, uh, you know, we, there's no reason we, we shouldn't take the opportunities that we want and need in our lives. Love and that. then the third, uh, the third one is relationship. And, and I guess this is uh, with mostly probably my wife and kids, but also probably clients. And that's just, I just, I need to be present. Um, if I'm with my wife, I need to be present with her and put the phone down and, um, same thing with my kids and just be present in the moment and enjoy, enjoy the moment that's in front of me versus focusing on the next thing. It's great. Love it. What would you say from a business standpoint, Mike, what would you say is if as a, as a newer licensee, what would be some of the things that you would say, Hey, you know, this, this needs to happen. And you, you need to be doing these things. If you're new to the business or you're just sitting there kind of in a funk and you want to get more business done and, it, you know, you, we've had the virus, we've had all the politics, we've had all the civil unrest, we've had, gosh, so many, so many emotional things going on. Uh, what would you say to an agent today should be some of their minimum standards? Uh, you know, one, I would say you're in the right place uh, with Everest because I really think that think. The culture and atmosphere uh, impacts our mindset. And if we're if we're in the wrong place, if we're spending uh, time on, uh, you know, letting the news and all the trash that's out in the world seep into our mind, um, then then we're already starting behind. You know, um, so I think one, you've, you've got to be in the right place. You've got to be in the right mindset. And I firmly believe this is the place. This is the culture I want to be immersed in. And, and I would, I would think that's true for, for anyone else. Um, two is just, uh, don't, 
don't be afraid of the process. Um, you've, you've got a prospect. And, you know, I, I mentioned being sick and my economy disappearing. And that might sound weird when I say I also closed five deals while I was sick. But I also know that this business is about filling a funnel and that funnel, funnel is future business. Um, so I didn't prospect for six weeks. So I nat know the natural result of that is my October and November are probably gonna be a little sparse. Um, but I'm working really hard to make up for that. Um, so yeah, just I would say you've got to you've got to prospect and work on skills and and be in the right place that you can protect your mindset. Yeah, so that's what I'm hearing. So one, don't underestimate the magnitude of environment, right? Yeah. Number two, and I, environment is not only people within the company, but people on your outside circumstances, right? Who are you spending your time with? has such a profound impact. And sometimes we think, oh, it's no big deal, I'm fine. But we wouldn't say that to our young, you know, a young teenager or to a young man or young woman. We know that if they run with the wrong crowd, they, we know the impact of that is gonna be very, very negative. So we can't overstate the importance of the right environment. The second component, I, what I'm, I'm hearing is you said skill sets, right? So improving what you do, practice, rehearse, internalize scripts, dialogues, communication skills, and elevate them to a, a much higher level. And then, of course, you, you mentioned in regards to, you know, your, 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 your prospecting and doing the work and the activity. So, you know, you, you, if you summarize that, what I'm hearing is that you can always hear things in different ways, but it really comes down to mindset. So what are we going to do this week to elevate our mindset, to protect it, to improve it, right? Part of that is the environment. Part of that is what we read, study, who we spend our time with, what we watch, what we, what we do in our lives. A second component is to elevate who we are today. So to get back to those fundamentals and to elevate our game in regards to our communication, our ability to sell real estate. And the third is the activity level. It's the personal discipline. So mindset, skill sets, discipline. Guys, if, if you're not hearing that, when, 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 when anyone is in any moment of challenge or they're having extraordinary success, I guarantee you, I can take a step back, look at their business and go, mindset, skills, discipline. Either it's the reason they're successful or it is the reason they are not. Or it's the reason they're having a little bit of success or almost no success. It is always going to come down to those things. And what I love, Mike, and what I'm hearing from you is that you get it and you may package it just a little differently than me or you may say it a little different than other. it doesn't matter the reality is is that you get it you get that it's your mind you get that it's your skills and you get it that your disciplines and what you do every day i hope everyone's hearing that and that you really are going to step up in those three areas like i've watched you mike do and so many other great agents and if you are struggling look the here's the answers to the test here, the, 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 the test is mindset, skills, and discipline. Those are the answers. But if you don't apply those principles, it's going to be a very, very difficult week and a very, very difficult business for any and all of us when we move off of those three principles. So, Mike, in closing, as we're just about out of time, what would be your final advice? What counsel and advice would you give to this group? What would you like them to know? Um, you know, I think... Uh... I, I guess I would just first restate the um, you're in the right place. We're in the right place. The environment and everything you just talked about, the brokerage provides. If we just uh, if we participate in the role play with Rick and Ruby in the morning, we're going to build our skill sets. Um, you know, if you uh, if you'll get on and, and listen to to ascent and the base camps and the summits, um, you're, you're going to protect your mindset, uh, especially if you do the things that we, we learn to do and read the books that are brought up. And uh, if you'll just follow along, um, these other things are going to fall into place with uh, with skill sets. Uh, you know, George can't make you prospect, but uh, we have a we have accountability contracts and there, there are just so many things that if we'll just immense ourselves in this environment, those things will be the natural result of, uh, of being in the environment. Uh, and then the last thing, you know what, you and I talked a little bit about this when we talked and that's just being, uh, being vulnerable. And that's kind of a new thing for me coming out of my illness is this idea of being vulnerable. Um, my relationship with my wife is probably the best it's ever been. I think the, the key to that is that I've, I've been able to be vulnerable with her and really open up about my awesome. fears and, and things, but also be vulnerable with myself, which I think is 
also being 100% honest with myself and not, not kidding myself about who I am and what I do. And, um, and you know, I, 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 guess, uh, I guess that vulnerability is, is kind of the, the piece. And I'm still exploring that and what that means and what that means to me. But, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of a, a takeaway from this that I, I know being vulnerable is, is important. And I don't even think I fully understand what that all means right now. Yeah, I love it, man. Spot on. I, I wrote down here with, with when you were saying, I said, what is easy to do is just as easy not to do. And you gave a list of a handful of things, right? Hanging out with Rick and Ruby at the morning sense and the role plays and the ones that start at 7 a.m. or, you know, you know, attending this, you know, what, what, again, just again, what is easy to do is just as easy not to do and how often we don't do the things that are so easy. And uh, you're spot on. And, you know, look, the, the queen, if you would say, the, of, of vulnerability who really went viral uh, on vulnerability uh, is, of course, Brene Brown. And anything that she's written, I've tried to take uh, full account of and read and study. And just the, her, her, even her audio thing, I think it's called The Power of Vulnerability or her TED Talks on Vulnerability and uh living greatly or daring great daring greatly uh by is one of her great books one of my favorites and i hope that uh those of you who haven't read any of those books i would encourage you and you know for years i've talked about the idea of true friendship and on my wall over here i have was given a gift and on that and it gives these five principles of true friendship and mike if i have to tell you if i would we'll wrap up with this but i'll just read them and the first one up there is integrity right living a life of integrity and we have contracts with ourselves, we have contracts with others, but to truly exercise and to execute upon those, those moments of integrity within our lives. And then the second is gratitude and being incredibly grateful for every moment of every day. The third is loyalty. And you know, what's interesting is that you didn't read my list, you brought it up, but it's interesting. Loyalty is such a foundation to true friendship and to wonderful relationships. And even when we get into the depth of intimacy, right? Loyalties, integrities, uh, uh, gratitudes, how important they are as we move through our lives. And then the last two are forgiveness, right? Having a forgiving heart, because no matter who's around us, no matter, no matter what, people try to try, try their best and they still make mistakes. They still err in their ways and we have to have a forgiving heart. And then the last is the word that you brought up, which is vulnerability. And I've often recognized that if those relationships and friendships that I have that are the closest ones of my life are the ones that have those five ingredients of integrity, gratitude, uh, loyalty, forgiveness, and vulnerability. And they're so important to our lives. And you're exemplifying that, uh, Mike. You're such a great example. And I'm so thrilled for, for what you've done. And I'm even more excited to see what you're going to do because I, I know that uh, you're not going to stop. And I know you're going to do some extraordinary things and you're a great leader. You're a great friend, not only to me, to the company, but uh, grateful that you're part of our lives and grateful for today. So thank you, Mike, for everything. Well, thank you. I appreciate you uh, creating this organization and uh, I, I, we don't have nearly enough time for me to express the gratitude and the things that it's brought into my life. So just thank you. Yeah, well, absolutely, Mike. Well, thank you. And thank you for contributing today and, and being a contributor to the organization and the people within it. So, all right, with that, let's wrap up. Let's do some closing affirmations, guys.